The eyes are the compelling point in this photograph. However, they could use a little pop or a little Photoshop. Unless you're standing outside at noon facing north, the temperature of 5,000 degrees Kelvin on a sunny day, or unless you're in a studio with somebody who's very good at lighting, the eyes often darken. If I zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus, you could see that there's green on the inside and a little bit of blue on the outside. That is my real eye color, grew them myself. But sometimes that's a mid-tone area between light and dark and it gets plugged up or too dark that you don't really reveal the true eye color. That's when Dodge will save the day. So if I go to my Tools panel, you have the Dodge tool. Dodge is a photography term to lighten. But the Dodge at 50% is way too bright and will look artificial very fast. Although I want to give these eyes a little more pop, I don't want it to look too worked on or too fake. I just want to draw the viewer's eye to the eyes. So I will dial my brush size down until it fits around the pupil, and I'm making a circular motion but not painting yet, in the iris of the eye. I call this my safety area where I make menus go away but don't mark the image. So I'm just going to do one sweep around the eye and more of that light green is revealed. Now in addition, most people will whiten their eye whites. As we age, our teeth and eye whites yellow. But you'll notice this is starting to look really fake really fast. And a lot of people ask me, well, if it's eye whites, shouldn't I be whitening the highlights? The answer is no. If I look at Window and Info, your Info panel is an on-screen densitometer, the device they use to measure color and give you the recipe for it. And the eye whites are really above 25%. There are some spots that fall lower, but highlights are really below 25%, 20, 10, 15, 5. If I were to set it on highlights and use a more realistic exposure, like 20%, so it's more subtle, it's lightening the things below 25% and really producing more of a fake glow than this did when I was lightening midtones. So I'll undo that, and I'll set it on midtones because the eye whites are often in a midtone range, even though you think they should be a highlight, they're not pure white. So now, as I lighten, it's more realistic and a lot less severe than this lightning. But I tend to go too far on the eye whites to show you how I bring back original, real detail using history. So that's typically where I whiten. A sweep around the inner eye with dodge and I whiten the eye whites. The next thing I do is burn. Burn is a photography tool to darken. And you could think of something burned to a crisp. It's black when you're finished. Again, I only do 20%. So simply hitting the number 2 on your keyboard goes to 20. 1 goes to 10. But I'll go back to 20. And that works on every tool that has an opacity setting or an exposure setting, and even on the Move tool for an entire layer's opacity. In this case, I want to burn only things in shadow. If I make my brush the size of the pupil and do a couple clicks, I'm again improving the contrast between light and dark, light and dark, making the eyes the focal point. I will finish this off with a smaller brush size, about the height of the eyelashes, and I will burn the eyelashes to really make myself look more feminine. I always use this on baby and shots of women, but I tend not to do it on shots of men. I'll do the inner eye, but I don't want to make them look more feminine, and eyelashes usually make you look more feminine. And when I did the right eye, notice that it also darkened or richened the eyeshadow. I kept saying to the makeup artist, I could take more eyeshadow. I don't need a natural look. And she was very delicate about it, but this is really what I wanted to go for. So once I've burned there, I want to show you the difference in burning 
between midtones and shadows. If I set this to midtones and hit the right bracket key on my keyboard to make the brush a little bigger, when I burn, it just kind of takes everything around 50% and burns it. So midtones hover anywhere between 30 and 70%, highlights 25 and below, shadows 75% and above. And when I say percents, I'm talking, if you can imagine, 0 to 100%, 50% being gray, if you're talking black, 0% being white, 100% being black. I tend to use the CMYK numbers always because I started in the print world and I learned them first, so I'm most comfortable with those. So as I look at the values, there you can see 56, 80, 35. So there's a range, but this looks flat. It's not richening the brown eyeshadow. So I'll undo the burning and set it to shadows and now burn and the eyelashes will simply pop. However, this side of the eye was already in shadow. So if I try to burn below, it may look too smoky. So I'm going to undo that and try one for 10% or you could dial your exposure down to 10% and just do a little light burning. Now when I fit in window, I always check myself and I know I went way too far on this eye. So in the history panel, I can stretch it. And this is the original, before the latte, after the latte, before the latte, after the latte. So I clearly see the eyes are glowing. They look fake. Dodging is also wonderful for whitening teeth. So what I'm going to do is bring back a little bit of the original. Before I do that, another photography trick is to burn the edges of the eyes. Often there's a lot of pigment that exists right at the edge. And if you stare into someone's eyes, you'll usually notice the edges are a little darker. So I'm still on the burn tool. I hit my left bracket to make my brush smaller. And I'm just painting right around the edge of the eye to enhance what I would see if I had perfect lighting shooting directly on my face. So here, I'll just do a few steps back. Ooh, before, after. Let's go four steps back. Before, after, so that's that eye. And I could see all of my steps in history. So there, this is the first eye. Before, after, if I hit the right spot. Yes, I did. So to finish this off and not make it look too fake, I'm going to use my history brush. Y for history <laughs> always gets me there. And I was using it earlier, and I already dialed down the opacity or the strength, how transparent or opaque, how solid it is. I already dialed it down to 20%. So I'm going to use a smaller brush and paint back 20% of the original eye detail, 20% here. 40% is my second paint stroke. 20% here. And if I think I burned the eyelashes too far, I could use history to bring those back to 20% of the original. So now, I think I'm happier. I tend to fit in window, Command-0 or Control-0, to see if I've gone too far with the eye whites. And now, here is my final before and after. Good shot. Originally, eyes that pop. And I will use my history brush wherever I think I've gone too far, and I'll check myself by doing before and after. It really brings so much more life to the photo, and I hope you've enjoyed this trick of dodging and burning the eyes, the eye whites, the pupils, the edges, the inner eye, and the lashes for women and children. Now let's see what you can do with your photos and the eyes of your subjects.